Well, Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome back to uh, Episode 8 of my Dodge Raider rebuild project I've been working on. We got past all of the uh, holiday Christmas nonsense, all the multiple Christmas dinners and the shopping for presents at the mall and driving out of town and all that's behind us and now it's back to business as usual in 2019. Today is January the 1st um, and I spent half the day out here working on this thing. It's been a little bit of time since I've got a video up on what I've been doing with it so I wanted to update you even though it doesn't look like I've gotten a whole lot done. I've, I've done some stuff. I wrapped up the front suspension which um, I was working on the last time I showed you what I was up to. Finished up the driver's side, got the sway bar linkage put on, and uh, spent a little bit of time greasing zerts and replacing a few uh, tie rod ends, that, that sort of thing. So I'm uh, greasing all the zerts, all the suspension components here, before I put the shocks in and the brake parts back on. A little easier to get to some of these ball joints. And the way that you grease these is, of course, you attach your gun to the, the grease zert, and you want to pump grease into these until the old grease starts to come out. You'll see like a little nipple on the sides of these things. Um, it's a little opening for the old grease to squirt out while you're pumping in the new grease. And you want to just pump that in until you see fresh grease come out instead of the old grease. And as you can see, as I pump this, it's starting to come out. And also, some of these ball joints, it'll just come out the edges, which is okay, I suppose. Doesn't necessarily have to have a dedicated opening. But all you're trying to do is pump enough grease to get rid of the old black stuff to replace it with the new grease. As you can see there, it's starting to clear up. So we got rid of the black stuff. And the, the clear grease is in there now. Okay, so here's the spindle that the hub runs on. And this, this uh, seal gets tapped into the back of the disc hub and it runs right on that surface right there. This surface right here is what the seal runs against. And you have to make sure that that's smooth. This one, isn't that smooth. It has a little bit of pitting and that's caused from either some moisture getting in there or some debris. Maybe um, it ran out of grease on some level and it got hot but it pitted the surface a little bit. So what you want to do is address that before you put a new seal on. If you put a new seal on there that pitting surface will either chew up the inside of the seal or it won't seal it great. So what you'll do is take a little bit of uh, WD-40 and some sandpaper. This one is 320 grit, we'll go up to 600 grit. You can even start lower if the pitting is bad, you can start down around a 180 grit, 220. And you're gonna you're going to sand this for a while and get rid of any pitting or grooves that are on that surface. You're not really taking off a lot of material, you're just sanding away enough to make it smooth. Okay, we're just wrapping up uh, work on the suspension on the driver's side of this car. 
I didn't really want to film too much of it because I showed you what I did on the other side and it's kind of monotonous doing uh, everything twice, showing you how to put on the rotors and the shocks and the brakes and all that. Uh, but I wanted to film a little bit of it just to show you that I was actually working. So I repacked the uh, automatic uh, clutch, four-wheel drive clutch on these hubs, put them back together, and you can test them by just grabbing the axle, the drive axle the back, and spinning it in the forward direction. And you can see that this clutch opens up when you go forward and grabs all the teeth on this hub. This hub spins independently of the axle center. So if I just spin that, You can see it extend, grabs the teeth, and becomes four-wheel drive. And then when you want to take it out of four-wheel drive, you put it in two-wheel drive and drive it in reverse. And when you go in reverse, you'll see it pop. And now it's free again. So these, I've tested both sides and both hubs work fine. I checked the rear uh, brakes, wanted to see what kind of condition they were in. I was hoping that they were going to be in uh, good enough condition that I wouldn't have to worry about them for right now. So the driver's side looked pretty decent. It had some good pad uh, thickness to them, and it didn't appear like they were leaking. So I was pretty, um, pretty excited about that until I checked the passenger side, and that was a disaster. Uh, it was leaking grease out of the axle bearing and also the uh, brake cylinder was uh, leaking pretty good. So I decided to tear into them and tore everything apart, order some seals. Okay, so I took off the rear drums here to check the condition of the brakes in the back. And uh, when I took off the driver's side here, I was kind of uh, pleasantly surprised that they look pretty decent. At some point, these brake pads have been replaced, these drum pads here. And they're pretty good still. They're probably 50-60%. So I was hoping I could just leave them alone for a while. I checked no moisture coming out of uh, the brake cylinder up here. And it doesn't look like there's much moisture coming out of the axle seal. So my plan was to go ahead and just put it back together and leave it for the time being. Kind of like my plan was for the front. However, when I went to the other side, uh, it was a different story. You can see here that there is plenty of fluid coming out of the cylinder. You peel back this uh, seal just a little bit. You can see it's leaking oil, brake fluid. And it also appears that the, the seal, the axle seal down here has some grease coming out of it. So, gotta pull them apart. I've already ordered the parts. I ordered new axle seals. I ordered a uh, new brake pads, and a cylinder rebuilt kit. So I'll pull those apart and rebuild them. So I'm just the process here of um, taking this all apart and uh, fixing everything. Now, the way that you pull these drums off on many cars, but especially four by fours and whatnot, 
is uh, they'll be stuck most of the time. And there's there's two ways they get stuck. They either this drum here will uh, rust itself to the rear axle, right right here. This whole surface will rust itself to that. And that's because 4x4s are in the water and mud quite a bit. And uh, so they supply you with two uh, holes right here, two threaded holes that you can uh, screw in bolts, one, uh, one on each side, and you just tighten them back and forth until it pops it off. Now the other way that it'll get stuck is that your brake shoes can wear themselves into the drum to such a point that there's a groove that the drum can't get past. If that's the case, if, if it's not rusted here, if it is in fact just these these pads that are that are worn into the drum, you'll have to go in the back. Right back here, there'll be a window that you can pull this rubber plug out right here, and uh, you can stop down these pads by screwing this uh, this disc right here with a little flat screwdriver. You can stop down those pads enough to get the drum off. And then furthermore, if you're gonna replace axle seals like I'm gonna do, there's two ways these axles come out, depending on what kind of rear end you have. If your rear end has a smooth back on it with no bolts, then the axle comes out by unbolting something up front here. Usually it's gonna be some bolts in the back. You can see there's four of them right there. Or there's gonna be a clip, a C-clip or something that's keeping this axle in. Once we unbolt it, this, this axle will slide off straight out. If you see a cap with a bunch of bolts and nuts sticking out of the back there, then you have to take off the back cap and you'll have you'll have C-clips inside that rear pumpkin before those axles will slide out. Just uh, something to keep in mind. This one has a smooth back and you can see that the front pumpkin uh, is bolted on and that will only come off once you slide these axles out. Okay, so as you can see under here, I've been working on the rear end a little bit. I went ahead and drained the pumpkin fluid, the rear end fluid, before I took the uh, axle out. And it looks like it's pretty old. It's been in there a while. It's a limited slip differential, so I'll have to put the limited slip additive. But uh, what, you, what you have here is you have two uh, bolts in most rear ends. The bottom bolt drains it. <clears throat> the uh, middle bolt here is where you fill the fluid. Now, typically what you want to do is attempt to take off the top one first because if you strip this one, if it's a different, a smaller bolt or a bolt that is easily stripped, then you, could, you can still have fluid in the rear end. You could drive it to a professional to have them figure out how to take it out. If you take this out first and it leaks all the fluid out and then you go up here to fill it up with new fluid and this one won't come off, you'll be in trouble. Uh, but if you're a hardcore mechanic or a hobbyist like I am, uh, it doesn't matter which one you take off first because there's no way I'm going to take this to a mechanic to work on it. I'll, I'll plasma torch the whole rear end out of this truck and fix it myself before I'll ever take it to a garage. But uh, just uh, for the weekend warriors out there, good, good advice to try to t take the top one off first. Okay, we're gonna, working on this driver's side now. We just did it on the other side, and I just wanted to show you how we pull this axle out since I missed it over there. Uh, I stripped off all the brake stuff, threw it in the box, which I'll clean up here in a minute, scrub it all down, get ready to reuse it. You got four bolts in the back here that have to come undone. And then I undid the brake lines that go into this um, cylinder, brake cylinder, and I also pulled out the uh, emergency brake cable and unclips from this backing plate.
the other axle. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty nasty. This, uh, you can see here that the, the differential fluid, the rear differential fluid has leaked past this seal into the wheel bearing and just souped up the grease that's supposed to be in that bearing. So I'll pull that, I'll pull this apart. First I'll mark the axle here against this nut so I can get it back to the same dimensions. I'll pull the nut off. We'll use that tool to pull out the bearing. We'll clean it all up, look at the bearing, make sure it's not damaged, replace the seals, and regoop this. But it doesn't always have to be the outside seal that leaks grease out into the brakes. It can be that inside seal that leaks uh, that, that diluted um, differential fluid into the grease pack, and then it just tears the grease up. It just makes a soup out of the grease. Makes it really ineffective for the bearings. As a side note, be careful with the dust around your brakes when you're taking them apart. Never use compressed air to blow that dust around. It's cancer causing, especially the older asbestos stuff. But even any, any dust is not good to breathe, even if it's not asbestos. Um, so definitely wear a mask if it's going to blow around, uh, but don't don't even bang on it very hard to get that dust up in the air. I mean, unless you're a big fan of lung cancer in 20 years. If you're uh, a big fan of um, 20 years from today's date getting some lung cancer, then, then go for it. Okay, we are making a tool <clears throat> to extract that wheel bearing off of the rear axle, one of the rear axles. And to do that, you have to cut a big hole right here in the center of a piece of steel and a couple of holes on either side. Or you can buy this plate. Mitsubishi used to make a, a plate uh, that you could buy to set down and I'll show you in the next video how th this works extracting that bearing. But the plate's like a hundred bucks. I found a couple of them online and it was a hundred bucks. There's no way I'm spending that for something I can make. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hole punch about a, an inch and five eighths, inch and three quarter hole right in the center of this couple of holes on either side, and then I'll show you how we use this to uh, extract a bearing. Okay, so we cut the hole in the center of this sucker. You can see here, it just took about six or eight minutes and plenty of oil. So now we're gonna punch a couple of holes on either side of that and I'll show you how we use this to extract that bearing. So there you go, that's all we were trying to do. Big hole, couple of small holes. If it doesn't quite fit, we'll enlarge them a little bit. Uh, but let me show you next what, how we're gonna use this. Okay, here's our tool that we built. We've got the big hole in the center, the two ones on the sides there. We're gonna set that aside. And as you can tell, this is the axle we took off. And when you take it off the car, you got those four bolts in the back, you slide it out. You unloosen all the nuts and the washers that are associated with this bearing here. However, the bearing is pressed onto the shaft, this whole, this whole section here needs to come up, but that bearing is pressed onto the shaft. So what you do is you put on the, the nut back on after you've taken the, the washers off, 
and you slide this down over the shaft to where it contacts that big nut you put on and it the two smaller holes grab the two bolts that are attached to this in fact we can probably take this up a bit about there and what we're going to do is we're going to put these bolts back on of these nuts here and put some tension on them. I'm going to grab a couple of washers. So I had to double up. I made a second bracket because it was pretty thin and kind of weak. But once I doubled them up to get enough steel on that to reinforce it, it works like a charm. There you go. So we take off this take off this uh, main nut and then the bearing race slides right off. And then you can inspect the bearing race for any bluing or uh, grooves or anything. This, this one looks pretty nice. And then when you take it apart, This is where you replace the outside uh, seal. This one was leaking. So we will take that out and replace it and clean all this up, of course. And there's your axle shaft. You can check this, the surfaces here. The seal surface runs right here. You make sure there's no grooves in the shaft. This one looks pretty good. So yeah, this will clean up nice and we'll put it all back together. Okay, I just finished uh, cleaning up some of the rear brake parts, the um, axle and uh, whatnot. And next I'm going to fix this wheel cylinder, brake cylinder in the back. And I'm going to do it with a kit instead of just buying a refurbished unit. This kit was about nine bucks. And to buy one of these re completely refurbished in as a whole unit is about 20 bucks. So I'm saving the $11 and just doing it myself. And what we're replacing are the two end boots and then also the piston rubber pieces right here. These are the two pistons that run inside this 
they run inside the cylinder. As you hit the brakes, it pushes them out, and the pressure is maintained by this rubber seal on each piston. So those get old. Uh, the, the rim in here will start rusting if you let the car sit too long, gets a little bit of moisture there, and that surface rusts, and then fluid spills past it. So we're going to use our little honing tool here. We're going to hone that out for a few minutes. We're going to replace the rubber components, put it back together. Ten minutes, we'll be done with this. So we went over that just for a couple of minutes there. We're going to double check this to see if we've got all the rust spots. And I can see just a couple of couple of spots in there that still have a little bit of rust on them. So we'll do it one more time. I'm going to use a razor blade to cut these old rubber seals off of here before we put the new ones on. You kind of don't really want to take a screwdriver and gouge them out because you don't want to nick up the surface at all. The surface that runs inside that bore should be as smooth as possible. In fact, when we get these taken apart, I'm going to run some sandpaper over the ends just to make sure they're completely smooth. Everything gets coated in brake fluid when you put it together just so that it is lubricated enough to slip on there. You don't want it to tear. You just want to press them over the end of that piston. In such a manner that the umbrella sticks out towards the fluid. You can see that there, that the umbrella sticks out that way. And you can also see that it's quite a bit uh, more protruding than the old one because this is new and it isn't. In fact, I'll have a little bit of issue getting him back on here. So we'll deal with that in just a minute. Okay, so I pushed one piston in this way and out. The other piston's gotta go in backwards and you just have to force it past that seal. And lastly, you wanna put the boots over each end. The way I like to do it is just to get some needle in those pliers and stretch them out a bit and pop them right over. And there you go, a rebuilt uh, brake cylinder for the back. We'll put the uh, bleed valve in it, bolt it on the Breaks and it's ready to go. All right, so while we're waiting for the paint to dry on some of these brake parts, we're gonna replace the uh, rear shock back here and also this uh, axle housing seal. I always like to use my brake free on some of these old rusty bolts and nuts.
So as you can see here, I got the old uh, shock out. Here's the new one. And uh, you can kind of tell if these are bad or not by pushing on them and feeling for any inconsistencies. Uh, to feel how hard it is to push down and if it, sp if it springs back. And this shock isn't the worst I've ever seen. It's not actually... It's still kind of usable. It feels a little wonky when you're pushing down and it, you can push it down pretty easily. But it is coming back so it's, it hasn't leaked out. And uh, really bad ones are just like clunky and... Whereas a new one, much tougher to push springs right back yeah definitely gonna feel better with new shocks on this car I always put this anti-squeak lubricant on any suspension parts that have rubber because you don't want to be going down the street squeaking like crazy Okay, as you can see here, we have uh, the new shock in. And now we're gonna concentrate on this uh, axle seal. We're gonna pull out this old seal right here and replace it with a new one. And there are two seals on each side of this car. One is an axle seal that keeps the differential fluid inside the, the axle and keeps it from spilling out into the bearing assembly. And then there's another uh, seal on the outside of the bearing assembly to keep the grease from going out into the brakes. So we're going to replace this one first. The second seal will be replaced on the hub, which we will work on next. Now, there's a few ways to pull seals. You can have a dedicated seal puller. You really just want a slide hammer of any kind that has a hook on it. I can't find my hook. I've got this L-shaped uh, attachment. But you just want to hook the edge and pull it out. Try not to damage the axle by grabbing the metal. You want to grab the actual seal. Okay, plan A didn't work out so great because I got the wrong attachment here. This is just kind of slipping off of that seal and I can't get a good grab on it. And I can't find my hook. There's a hook that, that'll spin on the front of these slide hammers and you can grab it. It's somewhere in my garage. I'll have to find it later. Plan B is to drill a small hole into the side of the seal like I have done previously with this old slide hammer. You drill a small hole and then you screw a, uh, a tapered screw into that hole far enough to grab some purchase on it. And then once that's on there, you attach the slide hammer and pull it out. So that's what we'll work on right now. Okay, our, our bearing hub and backing plate for the brakes uh, is dry. I painted it all black, cleaned it up, degreased it, all that good stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in the outer seal. This keeps the grease in the bearing pack. And what we will do is put a little bit of grease around bearing so that it slides in a little easier and we will tap it in
There. Put a little bit of grease on that inside lip in case I forget to do it later. Next, we are going to pack grease into this bearing. This is the main axle bearing for the rear hub. Over the axle and then down onto the surface for the seal. Okay. Next you want to pack you want to pack the uh, outside race with grease before you put the bearing into it. Race with some grease. bearing on place now. Okay, you need to either press this bearing on the shaft all the way down or tap it on. I just tap it back and forth. Make sure you tap against the in inner inside race until you bottom it out. And you want to put about 150 foot-pounds of torque on this nut or if you're not replacing the bearing with a new one uh, I scored the axle and put a divot on the nut so I know where it's supposed to be uh, if you don't want to torque it down so we'll put it down here bottom it out and then I will tap it with my punch until I get it to line up with the marks I put on here. All right, there you have it. Uh, the bearing packs repacked with grease, new seal, painted the uh, backing plate, and this sucker is ready to be put back on the car, and then we'll put all the brake components on. That's coming right up. Okay, we're going to tap this uh, inner axle seal into the tube here, and what I did is I just got a big washer and I ground it down just a little bit to match the circumference of that seal. And then I'm going to use that to, to uh, tap it in. Uh, if you have a seal tool, that would make it a little bit easier than using just a washer. Uh, <clears throat> and also, I'm going to use a little bit of sealant around this for two things. It'll give a little bit of lubricant to slide in. But also, in case there's any gouge marks on that surface, it'll just fill them in and, and create a oil tight seal I don't normally use uh, sealant on most seals just if I think the um, situation calls for it And there you have it. We have the seal has been successfully installed. Okay, we're to the point that we are going to slide this axle back into the tube. <clears throat> I put a little bit of gray sealant around this surface just in case to keep it from leaking. 
Now what you're gonna wanna do is when you slide this in is to not really put much pressure on that seal. You don't wanna accidentally tear it. So you'll just guide it in, try to keep the, the weight off of it. And there you have it, we got the axle back in. So I'll put this uh, brake cylinder on next. And what I try to do is I always try to work on brakes uh, one at a time. I left the other side completely intact and, and um, assembled so that as I'm putting all this together, I can go over and refer to the other side if I don't know which side a spring goes on or where it clips. Um, I do have the service manual if I have to look at that also, but uh, if you're working on brakes, I find it easier just to leave one side together so you can reference it. So I just wrapped up putting the brake components back on this passenger side uh, rear wheel here. And as you can see, it's ready to go. It's all new and clean and painted. I greased uh, the bearing and uh, put new seals in, and we put a new shock on the back there. Uh, you can compare this side to the driver's side. Now the driver's side I haven't really touched yet and you can see that it's um, slightly leaking and pretty pretty used. So I will begin working on um, replacing the seals on this side and cleaning everything up and putting new brakes on. Okay lastly we're gonna put the drum back on. I took a little bit of sandpaper and I scuffed up the surface in here just to take off any uh, glazing or anything that would be um, too smooth and uh, it looks like this has been turned or is a newer hub because it's in really nice shape. So somebody had done the brakes on this not too long ago and um, this is a good hub. So what you're going to do is you want to get these on fairly tight. You want the brake shoes to be in contact just slightly with that drum and you can adjust it with this star wheel here. And you'll do your rough adjustment from the outside like I'm doing now. However, you'll do your fine adjustment from the back. There's a rubber stopper and a window. Take this little rubber stopper out and put your spoon back here and toggle that star wheel. So that about covers it for this uh, week's episode on this Dodge Raider rebuild. Up next will be transmission, uh, installing the motor, installing the web carburetor, heater core, deal with the air conditioning, and then move on to some interior work. So uh, stay tuned, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Bye.